Hello everybody. Um, apologies again, it's been quite a few weeks since I put a film out. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to be more organised and sort of building some time into my week to allow for filming, even if it's a short film, and a little bit of editing. Um, and I was keen to get this out just to say hello to you, but also to tackle a subject that's a bit of an elephant in the room for me. And if any of you own um, classic vehicles, old camper vans, especially bongos, it's probably a subject you're all familiar with and you've either had to deal with it yourselves or you're nervous about it. And that is the big R. Yes, we're talking rust. And it's something that I have been well aware that these vans suffer from. Um, the fact is, bongos were built for Japanese roads. Uh, apparently, they don't use salt on the roads, so the corrosion isn't such an issue. Um, so, yeah, I, I've kind of been aware of the problem. But I'm afraid it's a problem that is kind of getting in the way of me enjoying my bongo these days. So I wanted to come on because I thought some of you might be interested in it. You might have some advice for me, which would be really helpful. But similarly, um, I just wanted to offer you a real up-to-date um, story, if you like, of the rust that I am suffering with, or at least my van is suffering with, and um, how I am dealing with it or not dealing with it. Just a bit of background first, if you haven't watched lots of these or you're not really familiar with my story with my bongo, um, I've owned this bongo now for eight years and it I bought it as a fresh import from Japan and I had photos taken of the van on the quayside in Japan just before it boarded the uh, container. Uh, all of the underside looking pristine as a lot of these vans are in Japan you know they're so well cared for. Uh, not a spot of rest. So the company that imported it for me um, put it in, I went to view it when they had got it off the ship and put it in a big barn. So it was undercover. And I, again, I went to look at the underside, beautiful. And then before it went into the great British climate, I had it under sealed with the same company. Um, wax oil equivalent, I don't think it was wax oil, but it was some rust protector. So I've been reasonably comfortable for the last few years and it's gone through MOTs and no one has ever, you know, in fact, they've said what a clean van, no rust. Um, unfortunately, I can't rest on those laurels much longer. Um, last year, back in October, when I took my van for an MOT, it failed on rust. Yeah, total heartbreak. And it was only a small hole, apparently. Um, so they welded, they did a little patch for it to get through the MOT. But it's been on my mind ever since that, you know, gosh, if it's starting, it's only going to get worse. Back about a year ago, um, I did notice some visible rust appearing on the paintwork on the sills under my van. And I did mention it on one of my vlogs last summer. And I've spoken to a couple of people about it, have had a quick look at it, not garages, just people who, who probably know more about rust than I do. And they've said, oh, that's, that's surface corrosion. You know, if you just strip that back, treat it, you know, it, it, it's fine. Um, and I suppose I have buried my head in the sand about it ever since. And uh, a couple of you suggested some, kindly suggested some really good YouTube videos. And I, I've had a look, but I must admit, I don't feel confident to tackle this myself. I do, what I don't want to do is strip the paint back and then make the problem worse. And I don't really know what I'm doing. So I have let it slide, I'm afraid. It's been a whole year now and I've kind of just watched it. And then I was sitting in, um, in the van the other day and I looked and I thought, suddenly it looks worse again. It's really getting bad. So I'm at the stage where it needs dealing with and I know I'm not going to be able to deal with it myself. So I'm going to have to take it to a garage. Um, and that's where the problem has started, actually, because I'm reasonably confident in knowing that I need to find a bongo garage for mechanical issues. And I, I've, you know, I've, I've found a garage in Worcester that I've taken the vehicle to for a couple of years for its MOT and servicing. Um, and that's absolutely fine. 
but I don't really want to go all the way to Worcester to have them look at the van. I don't really, I know they did the welding to get it through its MOT, but I'm not sure if I need um, more of a body shop really. And I have looked on all the forums and particularly in the South Wales area to see, you know, who's had good experiences. And I've gone to a couple of garages in my local area that are not bongo specialists. So I wouldn't go there for the bongo. I've had a bad experience in the past. Have a look at another video of mine about being really confident that the garage you are going to with your bongo understands bongos. Uh, anyway, this is bodywork. So I kind of have gone to garages that do welding and bodywork and I've asked around. And some of them have done work on bongos, but when I've gone to speak to the mechanic, they've been a little bit dismissive, shall we say, about my beloved bongo. And they've said, I haven't taken the bongo there. I've kind of dropped in when I didn't have the bongo with me. And they've said things like, oh, bongos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's going to be rest That's going to be a few grams worth of welding. And like, I haven't even shown them the bongo. How do they know it's going to be a few thousand? It could possibly be, but like, it's almost as though, oh, it's a bongo. Yeah, it's going to be a rot, a rot box. Um, and I don't really want to go to a garage that are that negative and cynical about bongos. Yes, I know they are trouble uh, sometimes uh, and prone to rust. But, you know, if they've got that attitude before they look at it, I kind of don't want them touching it. So I've gone to a couple of garages who've been a bit, mm, well, bring it in and I'll have a look. Um, but I've not felt totally confident. But I did visit a garage last week, which I felt had a good feeling about the mechanics there. They were very lovely. And I didn't, again, didn't have the bongo with me, but I said, you know, I've got a bongo. Oh, right, man, yeah, okay, no, yeah, yeah, I've done a bit of work on them. And I said, and I explained, look, I, I imported it. I un, it was under sealed before I brought it onto the UK roads. Oh, that's good, he said, great. And I explained about the sort of rust on the sills. He said, look, bring it in, we'll have a look, we'll tell you. And I, I just felt more comfortable with this particular garage. And they just did, seemed a bit more friendly about bongos. So I'm going there this morning with the van to hopefully get him to at least look, give a cursory glance underneath. I'm hoping he'll be able to say at a glance, oh my God, you're going to need thousands of welding on this vehicle. I'm hoping it's not going to come to that because that wasn't the case last, last MOT in October. I'm hoping he's going to say, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see the rest and it needs dealing with and we can do it and it's going to cost you roundabout, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I'm going to go there this morning and see what they say and then when I come back I shall do a little bit more filming and I'll tell you what they said and yeah this I think this story is probably going to run for a little while um, uh, because I do want to get it dealt with I know I'm going to have to pay uh, I just want to preserve this van you know I know when things mechanically go I can go to a garage and have it fixed um, it's just the, the rust worries me because I feel like once they become unsafe, there must come a point where they're not financially worth restoring. If it's, you know, if it's rotten and you practically can have to put a new chassis on it, <laughs> I don't even know if that's possible. Uh, and I really don't want to get to that state because I can't bear the thought of my van, you know, being irreparable. So yeah, biting the bullet today, I'm going to take it to the garage and I will take it on the chin, whatever they say. I'll see how I feel about them and whether I can trust my beloved bongo with them. And I will let you know later on. So let's cross everything and uh, yeah, see what the outcome is. Speak to you later. Got me good, got me on the plate. This is so weird and so unnecessary Look how we both got real good at burning bridges Okay guys, whew! Um, 
I'm feeling pretty relieved actually. Um, I've been to the garage, I spoke to this mechanic who seems absolutely lovely and he has kind of got under the van and all, all angles of the van had a look and the verdict so far is that underneath the van, as I had hoped, is sound and solid so no major rust issues underneath as far as he could see today um, it is as far as as we can see just looking at the outside really it is the outer sills on both sides that are a problem worse on one side than the other so this is the worst bit um, but it, it seems that it is just the under, the outer seal, oh, outer sill, sorry. Um, underneath seems solid. So what he has suggested is we get a new sill and we can possibly just cut it where it starts getting uh, solid and just replace this bit. Um, alternatively, when he does sort of look at it properly, we might need to replace the whole sill but he doesn't think sills cost that much so it's going to be hopefully reasonably inexpensive relatively um, and then obviously the paint will need touching up here to match and then this is the um, passenger side which he is hopeful that um, really is just going to be stripping back treating the rust and painting again and he did say if you know could save money by instead of matching the color it is now the silver by um, just painting it black sort of wax oil like the underneath um, but I think if the other side is going to be painted we might as well do the both so that's the update folks arches are okay at the moment which is good news I'm reassured you know my worst fear today was that he was going to look under the van and say you know it the rest has just been covered and it's been bubbling away underneath all of the seal and yeah it's rotten we're going to need to do the cross member and this that and the other um so I am I'm, I'm honestly hugely relieved it was what I hoped but until a mechanic tells you you don't know do you you kind of expect the worst so I'm going to book it in um, for a couple of weeks. He's on holidays um, in a couple of weeks time. I'm going to wait till after the Jubilee weekend because I'm hoping that we will be going away um, for a couple of nights between now and then anyway. And now I know that the van isn't going to, hopefully anyway, <laughs> fall apart underneath in the next few weeks. I'm going to get it booked in and dealt with. And yeah, just massively relieved and I hope this video has been a help for any of you who are in a similar position it's so disheartening when I know some of you have bought vans and they look great and then and then you know you get them to a garage and the mechanic taps it and just underneath all the all the sealant is 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 rusty and then they still need lots of welding so again i would say i know i've said it before but just really really before you buy a bongo you know as far as i'm concerned you know the bodywork is 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 absolutely critical forget you know i know the layouts are important but that's something that you know um you can deal with later but yeah just make sure if you can get someone who knows what they're looking for to sort of tap the metal and make sure it's solid underneath um they, they are going to rest like mine you know as, as as much as I've tried to take care the rust still appears and you'll get spots and, and for me this is a learning experience to learn how to deal with those bits as they appear um, so yes um, hopefully reassuring for some of you if you've got little bits of rust on the sills um, and yeah uh, just just a warning for everybody else just yeah do make sure that uh, that you kind of know what's going on underneath the vans and that they're sealed with wax oil or whatever your me mechanic recommends i don't know uh, the full names of them but yeah definitely something to keep on top of so um i've parked up now at our designer outlet um retail park uh just 
thought maybe a little bit of retail therapy. Now I'm feeling so happy and relieved about the van and um, I'm going to be doing another video in the next few days. I'm hoping to get another one out um, quickly because I know I've left a bit of a gap from the last video I did. And um, as a teaser, what I'm going to be talking about on my next video is I'm going to be joining a camping club, um, the Caravan and Motorhome Club. I've been a member in the past uh, and then most of last year because of lockdown and everything I didn't renew my membership and I tended to go for the free sites and wild camping and, and I did all of that last year which was really enjoyable but I'm thinking that I quite like the um, the certified sites so that the smaller sites you know the club sites are great um, but I just thought it might be interesting for some of you if you haven't been a member and you want to know what it's all about I'm going to be going away um, over the next few weeks to hopefully a couple of sites and I will film what they're like and yeah generally all about the caravan and motorhome club so that's coming up but enough from me today I will see you next week and I hope you're all well and enjoying the next couple of weeks with all those fabulous bank holidays take care everybody don't forget put comments in and don't forget to like and hopefully subscribe we're so near a thousand now and there'll be big celebrations when we hit the thousand take care everyone i'll see you soon bye